You want to know me secret, do you? How I'm going to pull off a job like this? Well, there's three points you've got to consider to take on this sort of enterprise. First, you need to pick your crew. They've got to have a range of skills and do as they're told. Second, timing. They've got to be where you want them at precisely the moment you want them there. They get there too soon and they stick out like dog's balls, get there too late and, well, the whole thing's down the dunny, isn't it? Then there's the all-important third element. Someone's got to be in control. Someone's got to see the whole enterprise playing out like a general, directing his troops... But ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing you need to pull off a job like this, the thing that I have by the bucket load, is confidence. Confidence. We're going to turn over a jewellery store, but not any old jewellery store. We're going top end of town. We're going to turn over Drums Emporium, Collins Street. Right, Tank, Snowy, your guard in the door. Don't let anybody else in. And keep your eyes peeled. There's at least two jacks patrolling the arcade at all times. And they'll be armed. Gus, you're on the inside. You've got to keep up the chat. Wait till I give you the signal, then move fast. Oh, by the way, I'm going to wear a disguise. Doll, you're the decoy. Just imagine you're a respectable lady. Don't cop your ages. I can't help it. Oh, come on, don't get distracted. You'll get the game away. And just one guinea, sir. Right. It's not the best quality, is it? The finest quality, sir. No, no just one moment. May I help you, ladies? There's a muffinier in your cabinet. Beautiful quality. Best out of Birmingham. Mm. How many larger? Uh, larger? Also very fine. This one here, a, a guinea, you said? Uh, yes, sir, that's a, correct. A guinea? Yes. Right. I'm going to need some change. I, I, I can supply you, you with mind? change. I have a cold in my head and I haven't got all day. Uh, yes, madam, I'll just be with this gentleman This is first. most unsatisfactory. Apologies, madam, it's a busy spell. You, the crew, it's behind you. Uh, yes, madam, they are a very fine article. From whence do they originate? Venetian. Paris. Oh, oh marvellous. Love the canals. I shall enjoy perusing them. The finest. <gasps> wait, wait. That? How are you human God? Thousands. Doll. Millions. Oh, Pitch bloody perfect. The salesman had no idea. It was perfect. <laughs> I was perfect. 
<laughs> I told you. I told you. I can do anything. What are you going to do with your share? No. I'm going to do whatever we want. Mm. Room for three at this party? No. Snowy. No. I could kiss you, come here. Hey, how come <laughs> Gus is carrying the loot? Oh, come on, you squirrel, been through this. Tank Buster! <laughs> that was clockwork, mate. You were clockwork. <laughs> it was great, wasn't it? Hey, smart and no rough stuff. <laughs> Don't get us a drink. Come on, let's celebrate. <laughs> how come Gus is carrying the loot? I told you, mate, he doesn't attract attention. There's supposed someone rolling. One of Long Harry's no, boys. Gus can look after himself. Oh, yeah, what? Well, open with a book of poems. I should have gone with him. Why, so you can shoot up Collins Street, huh? And didn't I particularly tell you not to bring a gun? I just want my fucking... Put that gun away, Snowy. Ask and ye shall receive. Oh, oh ye of little faith. Ah, uh, Les, I do believe you have found us the riches of Solomon. Tell so us what we risked our next in broad daylight for. <laughs> Bloody legend. Celeste, the bloody little legend. Hey. A legend? Yeah, I don't mind the sound of that at all. just been turned over. Do we know by whom? No, we do not. Word is they got away with thousands. Cheeky. We don't mind a bit of cheek, do we? Who the bloody hell was it? I don't know. You know? I don't know. Henry Stokes? Someone new then. New crew? Just lucky it wasn't on our patch. Otherwise, I'd have to hunt them down and cut their fucking nuts off. Raymond. That's good here. Bad business back Gallup Polly. Gally what? You know, over in Turkey. Our boys, I don't know. Yeah, well, bloody poms don't know how to stick by their mates. Speaking of mates, what the dickens was Snowy doing bringing that shooter to a job? Just showing Willie. Snowy's all right. Showing that he's bloody loopy. He'll be the deaf here. Mate, you just worry about keeping the swag safe. I'll do the talking. <laughs> Leslie Taylor for Mr. Stokes. He's busy. He'll want to see me. I'd have trouble spotting you in a crowd. I just thought, you know, I thought he'd want to decide for himself. Wait here. Play black rep, you know. Were oh, these toffs? Oh, yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, I'd prefer a game of twelve myself. G'day, Mr. Stokes. Have I got a treat for you? Well, you're a 
a pickpocket. Must have very deep pockets. Oh, we do what we must. I actually regard myself as cut from your cloth, Mr. Stokes. Pig's ass. Well, like you, I see further than from me hand to me mouth. So what can you do me? 300 the lot. <laughs> 300? Quality merchandise, I'm not denying. Oh, you bet it is. There's more carrots here than South Melbourne Market. This stuff would fetch more like 3,000 in the shop. What, do you reckon we should go back to John and see if they'll sell them for us? No, no, but, well, you know, blokes who melt them down, recut them. And you clearly don't know that items as hot as these make them nervous. And that costs 300. Well, seeing as we can't do business, I'll be taking my merchandise elsewhere. I suppose I could see my way to 320. Four hundred. Three forty. Three seventy five. Three fifty. Pleasure doing trade with you, Mr. Stokes. Or can I call you Henry? You can whistle Dixie. through this all again. Where's Detective Brophy? John? Freddy! You've come to slum with us, have you? Another pot, please, Clem. And a, and a glass of milk for my lady friend here. The drum jewel robbery. What have you heard? Come now, John. Don't you have more fizz gigs than any other officer south of Victoria Street? They've all been afflicted with a terrible case of the shrugs. What about your habitual jewel thieves? One's doing three to five in Geelong. The other one was last heard of in Hobart, trying to pass off marcasite watches as diamond. <laughs> a heist like that doesn't happen out of thin air. Mm. He did planning. Inside job. The staff will check out. Someone new in town, maybe. I'm thinking of blue. Oh, blue is good. Navy? Navy is a hue that will set off your piercing eyes. In a pinstripe. A blue pinstripe. A blue and red pinstripe. Blue and red. How audacious. Now pay attention, class. What the hell was that? Huh? You bloody little soup. Watch this. Huh? Mate, when I was your age, I could pick the ring off a bloke's finger. He wouldn't feel a thing. And now smarten up, go work the arcade and work those doors, right? And do it like you mean it. Go on. And here's me favourite bad penny. Took the words right out of me mouth, Mr. Brock. <laughs> How's tricks? Can't complain. Good, because I wouldn't listen. Now, those boys of yours, they've been flat out like lizards drinking, I hope. That job. Up in the arcade, that robbery of drums jewelers. You heard that? You heard anything? Oh, no, just, just uh, what I read in the paper, that it was um, done in broad daylight and they got away with thousands. And a smart enterprise. <laughs> Pulled off by a couple of shielders, if you can credit it. <laughs> it's got a funny smell about it, that job. Smell of what? Oh, for a start, it took real brains to pull it off. Now, that rules out all the crooks in this city. A bunch of gutless wonders and bantam roosters, you lot. But never mind, I still love you. 
the most important thing you need to pull off a job like this, the thing that I have by the bucket load, is confidence. And that's just another word for balls. Clean hands, Bert. Mm, passes that ribbon. Damn it, quick. Hey, he's a thick ass, big belly bastard, isn't he? Who? Bloody Brophy. Always taking me dosh, huh? Looking down on me. I think your mum will like yellow. Oh. I, I thought roses on account of. And then I thought, you know, I could maybe give them to her. I might just, uh... Ollie. Well, we've been together for three years. Les, you got to meet me sometime. Oh, of course. But today's not a good idea. You know, she's an old busybody. She's going to give you the third degree, ask a hundred questions. Well, I wouldn't drop me H's. Or me Dex. You can drop your Dex for me any time. <laughs> 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 Roses. Oh, Leslie. <laughs> but you always were so poetic. I got you this too. <gasps> A muffinia. It's pure silver. Have you been spending all your wages on me again? You know me, Ma. Lucky punter. No, Leslie, you're not lucky. You're clever. You make the most of your chances, isn't that right? Absolutely. Well, that's my boy. Well, this is lovely, though you know all I really want from you, don't oh, you? Ma. Now, Leslie, I just want to see my son married to a nice girl who gives me grandchildren to sport. Come on, Ma, I don't have time for that. I'm a busy man. Oh, I well, know I don't know all the ins and outs of your job, and I'm sure it's very, very important. And you know, I couldn't be prouder of my clever boy, but you're never going to make your mark in this world as a bookies clerk, now, are you? Coincidence, Miss, uh... Call me Lottie. Miss Lottie. I'm all alone, too. Oh. Well, let's see if we can't give some comfort to each other. Squizzy was christened Joseph Theodore Leslie Taylor. The nickname referred to the fact he was short. And if that wasn't bad enough, Squiz was also slang for a bowel motion. Nobody likes to be called a little shit, but the moniker would stick for the rest of his life. You do have the most developed leg muscles I have ever seen. <laughs> well, that'd be my bicycle. Taking a handsome bloke like you for a delivery boy. <laughs> I'm a bank manager. I manage two branches. Uh, Doncaster and Upper Temple Stone. Let me get that Doncaster. That's, that's bloody miles away, love. Nice orchards, but... Well, fruit picking season's my busiest time of the year. These days, I'm, uh, I'm cycling 20 miles twice a week delivering the pays to the Temple Stowe Agency. Oh, really? And all that exercise gives me a fearful appetite. Oh, wow.
wasted me time and expertise, Les. You are so... No, we didn't make any money off them. I know we didn't. I know. But... But we will. Because we're going to rob a bank. He leaves the Doncaster branch at 10 and he cycles down Doncaster Road to Williamson. Right, and then he turns left into Manningham Road and he follows that all the way down to the crossroads at Templestow Road. Is that right, Gus? Yeah. I mean, all along here, the paddocks are filled with fruit pickers. So I reckon we take him out here, right at the crossroads. I mean, there's nothing there but bloody juicy cows and sparrows. And there's bushes up here for cover. Where are we knocking? No, only if we have to. Of course we have to. He's going to see our faces. No, he won't. He'll be wearing disguises. Hang on, I'm not wearing a frock. But you look so good, he might stuff. Les, how exactly do you plan on getting us to Doncaster and back again? Yeah, it's the back of bloody beyond. Took hours to walk. Well, we use a car. But none of us drive. It's motor taxis. How much to hire a good car tomorrow morning? I'd like to travel to Eltham and back. The usual charge is a shilling a mile and five shilling detention fee. Uh, and you sure it's a, a good car, a good driver? All our chauffeurs are excellent. And the driver, how do we uh, manage him? We knock him once we're back in town, right? Wrong. We cut him in. But he's a squared. Tank, he's a chauffeur. Mate, we drop him a couple of quid. He'll drive us to Darwin if we want. I'm not working with some outsider. Now, I'll sort the taxi driver out. Jeez, if we, if, if we want to do this caper, we need a car and someone to drive us. Les, I, I admire your plan, but it, it, it's rather Byzantine. Now, perhaps it's just better if we don't bother. Don't bother? Mm. Mm -hmm. This bank manager carries 500 quid in that bag. 500 quid. Right, even split four ways, that's more than a year's wage each. So we can make a year's wage in a single morning. Now, Gus, you're right. It is a tricky caper, and no one's done it before. But that is why it's going to work. Cold, hard cash. It's my favourite kind. The taxi company. Isn't going to like taking this fancy little motor up the lane to collect us. Tank, that is why you're with the smart party. Uh, at Cliveden Mansions, uh, East Melbourne, 8 a.m., you, you got that? Yes, sir. And the name of the booking party? Uh, Mr. Lestrange. Thank you. Right, and there's one more thing. There's not enough room in the taxi for all of us, so we're all going to get a share of the coin. But I'm only going to use one of you on the day. Hey. Joss sure, now he's the right choice for this. I mean, Gus is smarter and Bert's bigger. Uh, Gus is too soft. Tank's too slow. Snowy. Yeah. Scares people. Thought it all out, ain't you? Yeah, of course I have. I want 
top of it all. Just leave it be. It tickles. Leave it be, I said. It's a little strange. That's me. To the countryside, I hear. Lovely day for it. Better for taking in the sights. What's your name, mate? Uh, Bill. You've been driving cabs long, Bill? Yeah, no, a couple of years. Uh, won't be much longer, but I'm joining up. Is that so good on you? Yeah, well, you know, all me, uh, all me mates are over there. Figure I shouldn't miss out. Uh, actually, take, take Templestowe Road, would you, Bill? Yeah, it's quicker if we... You said take bloody Templestowe Road. You having a shindig before you head to France, Bill? Oh, no, I ain't got them all, uh... Oh, well, you, you can't go to war without a party. Hey, that's not right. It's not Australian. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe if I kill the Kaiser, the king will give me a prize and uh, I can have one when I get home. See, I can't serve myself on account of flat feet, so... <clears throat> well, the least I can do is, is make sure you have a decent send-off, Bill. Hey, fair thing? Well, that, that'd be real bonzer of you, sir. Hey, all you need to do is, uh, is help us out with a little something. gets hurt, no one loses out, and you get your big chevoo. There was something off about you for a second, I saw you. There's nothing off about the chance to make an easy quid, Bill. Please get out. Beg your pardon? I won't do what you're asking, so get out. Please. Mate, there's, there'll be nothing to link you into this. Something right. Stealing. Don't sure. turn your nose up at the chance of a life. Shut the fuck up and do as he says. Or I'll give you a new holder winch through. It doesn't have to go this way. All right? You hop back in, you drive us to Doncaster, we spot our bloke, we do our thing, and in half a jiffy, we're all that much richer, and you're off to the front. Or I can blow you a fucking scone to kingdom come right now. Come on, mate. It's not that hard. You'll have to look the other way for ten minutes, tops. Fuck it is. <sighs> what did you do that for? Well, you told me to bring out my shooter if you didn't agree. Just scare him not to blow his fucking brains out, Jesus. No. Well, he wouldn't do what you said. He wasn't going to drive well, us. Well, certainly not now, is he? Huh? I was talking him round and you shot him. Snuff. What a moron. Are you calling him a fucking moron? You, you moron. What, you learn how to drive, have you? Huh? So we can roll our bed, bloke. You're going to drive us back to Melbourne after, are you? Can't get his body off the road before someone comes along. Well, why do I have to do it? Because you shot him. So what do we do now? Where are you going? I'm taking a constitutional back to Melbourne, thanks to you. Why don't we hitch? Oh, so someone can put two and two together between king and country here. Here you're a nit. Les? What? Can I have me gun back? No. Fuck me, Les. Only if you were the last bloke on the planet. Fucking new 
used to say. I didn't hear shots or nothing. I was just coming to see to the fence and I heard voices. Two blokes. You hear what they were saying? They was angry, but. And then I saw them heading across the bottom paddock. Towards town? By way of the weir, yeah. Did you get a gander at them? Not their faces. The tall one, he, um, he had one of them straw Panama affairs. And the other bloke? Bit of a titch. Or a black bowler. Well, good on you for dropping in. Oh, um, one of them, the short bloke, he was carrying something. What? A suitcase. But when they come out of the trees around the weir, he didn't have it no more. Right. Well, thanks for dropping in. One short, one tall. Not exactly Mr. Observer, is he? Detective Bruce, you know how to swim. I think I can manage the 50 yards. That should be plenty. What do you want to do that for? Evidence, Jack. The key to modern policing. The key to modern policing is locking up crooks, Fred. Always has been. Shorter one was in the front. How tall was the tall one? Taller than me. Five ten. Five ten. Five ten. Short one? How high? Well, he was shorter than me. Five six? Five no, no. Five two. Five two. Five two. Moustache, spectacles, and gloves. Dress-ups. Frederick Piggott was ahead of his time. He believed good police work was purely a matter of science. John Brophy, on the other hand, was an old-school cop with a nose for character, especially bad character. Both men would play significant roles in Squizzy's downfall. Police have formed the suspicion that taxi driver Haynes was an innocent victim in a cunning plan to rob either the Doncaster or Upper Templestowe Bank or waylay the bank officer carrying treasury notes. Police say it was a foul scheme, but one requiring great ingenuity. I mean, black and white. I'm a genius. Genius, my ass. Which is hanging out of me trousers since we didn't make any dodge. And whose fault was that? Says he was going to join up. He was going to fight the Fritz. I need a real drink. I might sup from the font of the bad. I gave the kid a choice, Tank. If he, if he had to listen to me, he wouldn't have come to any harm. He was just a foot soldier. You know? I'm a general, tactician, planner. If he'd obeyed my rules, he'd be halfway to France right now, and we'd be rolling in it. But he missed his opportunity, didn't he? They don't really kill kittens, do they? Oh, yeah, they stab their freaking eyes out. to shut at 6pm from now on, right? Hip hip hooray for the new licensing laws, I say. Because if I know the Aussie male's capacity for consuming fermented vegetable products, then I know that your excellent establishment will be getting a lot more new customers come Monday 6pm. Right? That is, of course, unless they wander down to your competitors, but why would they? Right? When I happen to know a young, enterprising businessman who can supply you with plenty of amber fluid for the right price... Sure, we can come to an arrangement. I've got a little red rooster to lay in a crop for days. I've got a little red rooster to lay. 
The pure genius of my scheme is that nobody gets hurt. The trick's getting our hands on a regular supply of grub. Well, that requires a long-term arrangement. And the best way to do it is to make sure every bloke along the way gets a handshake in it. Wagon driver, foreman, depot manager. Yep, pure genius. There really is more to you than just a pickpocket, isn't there? There are more strings to me bow than Paganini, Mr. Stokes. Call me Henry. You're squizzy, aren't you? Oh, I prefer Leslie. My mates call me Les. But there, Les. Busy. New restricted trading hours for pubs. I imagine people will be drinking more coffee. I thought you'd be applauding six o'clock and closing all the way down to the temperance union, Fred. It's a futile law destined to make the solving of real crime all the more difficult. Oh, to this matter of the Haynes taxi driver murder. We have this fellow calling himself a strange. He's booked a cab to pick up from Cliveton Mansions, East Melbourne. Now, who is he? Who indeed? Surely he's got to be known to us. I don't know about you blokes, but all the crims I know haven't got the patience for this sort of job. Surely it's an out-of-town mob. I'll have a new long tea, please. A scone? I'll get a black coffee and a finger bun, thanks. Look, this description you took from the residence of Cliveton Mansions. If the second man I observed getting into the taxi was short, no more than five foot two inches in my reckoning. And our farmer witness insists that one of the two men he saw was quite the shrimp. Look. There is this titch of a bloke. Leslie Taylor is his name. They call him Squizzy. But... But what? He's a petty crim. He lifts wallets, runs bets down the track. He's not a murderer or a bank robber. He hasn't got this sort of fancy gig in him. There's nothing fancy about shooting an unarmed man in the side of the head. Oh, but the other stuff. Using a phone false name to book the taxi. Planning the robbery down in the boondocks. Disguises. I mean, this bloke is a... There's a pickpocket in Little Lon. He's not Professor Moriarty. What's your connection to him? He's a fizz. Slips me a bit of information from time to time. Information? So even though this criminal fellow, Taylor, it's the description you don't believe he's our man? Look, he's a short ass with a big head full of piss and wind. He comes into this place, he swans around like he owns the joint. The bloke who booked the taxi used the telephone, correct? That's right. What was the name he used? Lestrange. Dal? You should have seen it. I had him eating out of me hand. He asked me to call him Henry. He even called me Les. <laughs> Les, there's someone to see you. Who? Sorry, Liz. Mate. Why? For their young blood. And for the kids. Harry? Fuck, dickhead. Did you say something, Taylor? Oh, I was just asking house tricks. I hear that you've been getting chummy with no less than Henry Stokes himself. I might have done a bit of work for him here and there. A pickpocket from Little Lon, playing with a big boy. 
I hope you ain't overstretching your reach. Hmm? Boxing in the wrong, dear. I do all right. Hey, but thanks for your concern. Fucking string bean. Overstretching me, Reach. If he knew what I'm capable of, huh? Now what I've done. Fuck it, everyone here should know who I am. They should all know oh, the single person. Get him. Hey, hey. And him. Hey. 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 What's going on here? Let him be. What the One tall and fair, the other short and dark. You're under arrest. Under arrest? What? Oh, oh, bro. Let him be. Hey, this is about the booze. I can cut you in, you know that. This is a lot more than a bit of slap and tickle. You've gone a lot further than that. Leslie Taylor, you are charged with the murder of taxi driver. William Hayes. There's a difference between confidence and overconfidence. Squizzy's greatest enemy wasn't the police, and it wasn't long Harry Slater. It was much closer to home. We have a witness that places both Taylor and Cutmore near the scene. We have a farmer who saw two men, one of them carrying a brown suitcase, walking in the direction of the car towards the weir. The same weir from which Detective Bruce here retrieved this brown suitcase filled with implements of crime. We also have an old chap who saw them getting into taxi number 11022 outside Cliveton Mansions at 8 a.m. that very day. He tells us the two men he saw are definitely not fellow residents. And the accused, Cutmore and Taylor? Typical criminal thugs. That's Cutmore to a T, but Taylor, I reckon he's got a bit more going on up top. Not after he's hanged, he won't. Squizzy Taylor, your lawyer's here. I didn't do it. Me neither. I never killed that taxi driver. Me neither. I was nowhere near Doncaster that day. My, my girlfriend will tell you I was with her. Yep, and I was there too. The police case against you is a might more substantial. Well, Piggott and Brophy are brimming with confidence. Well, we can't sort it out while we're stuck in here. Any reason you can't arrange bail with you, Jim? Fifty pounds for him. Hold on, I've got two eyewitnesses. You can't be serious. And, and 50 pounds for him. Mr. Catmull, pardon. Oh, and now, Les, I could go a bit. I could murder one, in fact. You're not worried you'll swing? Well, not if you swing with me, Annie. I like my business nice and regular. Now, a murder charge could be somewhat problematic for you. Distracting. Henry, I agree that your average bloke on the street facing the uh, hangman's noose may regard it as somewhat of a problem. See, but I, on the other hand, I see my situation in an altogether different complexion. I see it as a challenge. So how are we going to nobble those witnesses? Snowy. Ways and means, mate. House trade. The rats had a lean couple of days. Everywhere's quiet. What the hell is that? Three lines on page five. Is that all I fucking rate? What is with that fucking nickname again? Got my name right, Bruce. Shut up. Come on, fellas. We got work to do. <laughs>
I beg your pardon? Well, the gentleman sitting there may resemble the shortish man I saw getting into the car that day, but as to it actually being him, well, now I can't be certain. You are the matron of the City Watch House? Yes. And on the night of March 17th, the defendants were in the cells there? Yes, they were in adjoining cells three and four. Did they have any conversation together? They did. And did you hear it? I did. At about 11 p.m., prisoner Taylor was feeling jittery about the eyewitnesses ranged against him. Those bloody witnesses. Those. Stop tapping. You stop fucking tapping! And then he calmed somewhat. Did Taylor discuss his change of heart with Cutmore? He did. I just know. Well, the way I see it, those bastards can't very well pot us if the witnesses of theirs can't identify us. Right. So how are we going to do it? Once we've made bail. The bastards can't very well pot us for it if those witnesses of theirs can't identify us. And what did you understand from that? That he meant to get at him. Get at the witnesses. Dolly worries about me. She reckons I'm going to die young. Someone's bound to put a bullet in my head one day, she reckons. I just laugh. She wouldn't be happy if she didn't have anything to worry about. I wouldn't mind a bullet. Or even a blade. Anything but the rope. Good old doll. Been looking out for me since I was a kid. It'd be half a day of your time. The morning at most. You'd be done by lunch. It's got sand in it. What you're asking, Les, I could go to jail for it. You? Go to jail? A respectable, smooth-talking man like you. You said yourself that me out keeps this business running smoothly. All right, this is to your advantage. Really? Seems to me the advantage only flows one way. Business is a two-way street, Les. I do something for you. You have to do something for me. So what are you offering? A 10% price cut on the sly grog. 15. 20. Mr. Stokes, where were you on the morning of the 29th? I was at the Crystal Cafe on Burke Street. I arrived around 10 a.m. Did you see anyone you knew there? Yes, Mr. Cutmore and Mr. Taylor were at a table near the rear with Miss Dolly Gray. You saw the accused in Burke Street in the city at 10 a.m.? Same time the prosecution claims they were shooting Mr. Haynes a full 12 miles away in Doncaster? I saw them at 10. <clears throat> they were sharing a pot of tea. Mr. Taylor was reading the newspaper, the Argus, I believe. Squizzy! 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 Squizz
Sorry. Ah, oh, hello, sir. Hello, Squeezy. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Glad to know we're still doing business, Mr. Brophy, huh? No hard feelings? None. I'm just going to screw you for everything while I can. The coppers don't appreciate being made look stupid, Les. You shit in your own nest, you'll choke on it. One day, Brophy. One day you'll tell your grandkids you knew Leslie Taylor. Grogging to the citizens of Fitzroy. So you're free to pick pockets again, thanks to Henry Stokes. He must be giving his dick a pretty solid suck. No dick sucking involved, Harry. We're just good friends. Yes, well, any mate of that bastard I'll take with a grain of salt. Check it. You think I'd sell you watered down, Harry? You wound me. You really do. Man of me word. Good thing too. Or I'd make you eat them. So, you doing me the same price you're doing Stokes? I heard they cross the street so they don't walk on the same cobble. I don't care why he's doing it. He's a dickhead and I need every penny I can get. The bastards will send me to the poorhouse. I was thinking maybe we could pull off a bank job. Snowy would be in for sure and we could top up the coffers for all of us in one fell swoop. No can do, mate. The Jacks are watching me day and night. I mean, I can't even take a slash with that brophy or one of his uniforms offering to shake it for me. Right, and Snowy and Ed tell me it's the same for them. But it's not going to last forever. Right, and I'm planning to put one over them. But until then, we're just going to have to keep our heads below the battlements. We could boost a safe then. We could roll a bookie. There's a big race day Fuck coming it, up. Gus. I'll come up with the bright idea. OK? But until then, you'll give it a rest. Trouble is, I've got a couple of urgent domestic expenses. Bloody Henry VIII here. Shouldn't have too many wives. Well, at least Gus is married. Some men round here ain't been down the aisle even once. How is Mrs Murray? <laughs> Which one? The landlord's been going on and on about the rent. And the butcher wouldn't extend me any more credit. Now you're home, we can pay them all. Oh, of course we can. Love, mm -hmm. how much do we owe exactly? 108 pounds, six shillings and toppings. Right. Put your hands up or I'll blow your brains out. I'm a desperate man and I need all your money.
punch the head in. Probably for the best I'm in here, then. It's the name of your accuser, I'll have a chat. Thanks, mate, but it's, it's under control. I think I'm going to have a shot at defending myself. Defend yourself with what? Power of the spoken word, mate. Gus. Mate. No, no, no. One word in the teller's ear would be all it takes. Yes. I appreciate it. I really do. But it's fine. Let it please the court that regarding the day in Every question, it is a crime to speak with an crown accent crown indigenous to those states of the union opposed to the abomination that is human slavery, that the perpetrator of the crime which bound him hand and foot thereafter purloining money monies from the bank spoke with a, uh, with a Yankee accent. Now, what I wish to discover in the interest of jurisprudence and testing of evidence and the golden thread of the assumption of innocence is was this truly, was a, this truly a, a, a Yankee accent? Beg pardon? I'll repeat the question, shall I? My love. Come on. I'm bend over in the shower. Thanks for the tips, though. Mm. So you come visit me sometime, yeah? Help me while away the hours? Can you count on it? I warned him about doing jobs on his own. Q-E-D, that's Latin for it's not my fault. Dear Gus, hope this finds you in the clover. Sorry I haven't dropped by yet, but I've been busy. Very busy. My advice, keep clear of any of Long Harry's mob. And remember, if you stand tall, no bastard can get you down. Meanwhile, I always find it helps to look back on the good times. I can't sleep. I said I can't sleep. Dolly's always telling me I make things too complicated. That's just because she doesn't understand the way my mind works. You see, I like being the smartest bloke in the room. It gives me a thrill. But the biggest thrill is when you dream up an ambitious plan. And bang, comes off. There's no other feeling like it. It's better than sex. It's time we took our relationship to the next level. We've got a proposal. A way for us both to get ahead a little in these difficult times. But it's a bit... involved. I've got a proposal for you, Harry. A way for us both to make a quit in these difficult times. Why would I do a job with you? Well, we ain't ever worked together, Harry. And why is that, huh? Why haven't the, the Narrows gang and the Burke Street Rats come together? Join forces like the Spartans and the Persians. The Spartans and the Persians kick the shit out of each other. Well, the other. point is that we're stronger as a team. What's the plan? A tried and tested one. First, we use disguises to avoid identification. And second, we organise a decoy to distract the staff while we snatch the loot. And third, my personal signature. We chain the door so they can't chase us and call the jacks. Brilliant, huh? Now, who do we use as a fence? Henry Stokes. Stokes? I wouldn't trust him further than that. He'll get us a good price. Yes, well, so would plenty of others. Well, well do they have Stokes' clout, his reach? Stokes is a liar and a cheat, and he's from Tasmania. I vouch for him. What if I agree that one of your blokes is bad man? Matt Daly. 
He carries the loot and he does a deal with Stokes. Is he reliable? I'll vouch for him. Mr. Brophy, I want to I get us back on an even keel. You know, back to normal. Show, show willing. How willing? Word on the street is there's going to be a jewellery robbery. So the Jets nab Daly before he gets in. And they get to look like ace crime busters. Everybody wins. Except Matthew Daly. Yeah, well, he'll have to do a spot of time. But as far as Long Harry's concerned, that's because Daly attracted too much attention and got himself arrested. How do we make any money out of this? Well, Mad Matt Daly's the decoy, right? Snowy's the one lifting the loot. And unknown to Matt, he's going to make the lion's share disappear. You stuff this up, you'll have every man in town after you. Back. Ready? Let's just possess ourselves with patience and see where he's headed. Come on. Brophy, grab him. What are you doing? Hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here, Daly? fucking listen to you. You and your stupid fucking scheme. Harry, it wasn't my fault. Matt reckons close to a dozen jacks turned up at Stokes. And I think he drew them there. And how do you reckon that, Leslie? Oh, he's a thug, Harry. Hey, he stomps along like Jack the Ripper. Any cop in town would know that he was up to no good. But he was your choice. So, <clears throat> anyway, look, I'm glad you're here because I need to know that we can depend on him, right? And with the jacks. Are you saying that I would have a filthy dog working for me? No, I'm saying that for all we know, he's in there fizz kicked and putting you and me in it right now. Matt knows how to keep his gob locked, Les. What bothers me is this. You see, it says that 1,435 quid's worth of rings was taken from Kilpatrick's. But when the Jacks nabbed Matt and Stokes, they only had 300 quid's worth. Well, that leaves over a thousand pounds worth of sparklers missing. Where have they got to? I don't know. Maybe the report's wrong, Harry, hey? Or Kilpatrick's are running an insurance scam, hey? Up no, in their no, loss. No, I don't think so. You see, I think that someone has dudded me. Dudded you? Yes, dudded me. And I know who. Henry fucking Stokes! Yeah, well, what makes you think it's him? Because he is the only prick that I know who has got the sly calculating brain capable enough of coming up with a scheme like this! I'm telling you, Liz, if Matt goes down, I am going to find Stokes. I'm going to cut off his head and I'm going to sit down his neck! OK, well, we'll sort it out, hey, Harry? You just relax, hey? Take a seat. Funny. You're making me nervous, mate. Come on, doll. Make him a make him a brew. Cup of tea would be great, doll. Thank you very much. Well, have a seat. Have a seat, everyone. Squizzy Taylor had learned a thing or two about the court process during his murder trial. He discovered that as part of full disclosure, jury members' names and addresses were posted for all to see. A few quid to the right jurymen, and Stokes and Daly's chances of acquittal looked a whole lot brighter. Hopefully, all the bad blood his scheming had caused would soon be water under the bridge. Mr Stokes, the police claim when they arrived at your business premises, they found rings stolen from Kilpatrick's on your desk. Mr. Stokes, 
You said in your original statement to police that at no time did Mr. Daly offer to sell you rings stolen from Kilpatrick's jewellers. Are you now saying he did offer you stolen property? No, he never offered to sell them to me. We find the defendant not guilty. Let me see you shake that thing. Even though his man had been acquitted, Long Harry was far from happy. There was still the little matter of a missing thousand pounds. Happy days, doll, eh? All's well that ends well. You heard from Cutmore yet? Uh, yeah, he's got onto the best fence in Sydney, some... Sheila called Kate Lee. He's going to be back any day now, and our pockets will be that much. Well, pressure. well, well. Stokes the thief with his pet rat. Be careful. You might catch fleas. Hold him. You can hear me good and clear, can you? Listen, you ain't welcome in Fitzroy no more, Squizzy. Your good mate over there neither. No one that you work for. No one who works for you. Fitzroy, Carlton, Colum, that's all my territory. If I see any of you north of Victoria Street, I will kill you. <laughs> Seamstress, do I make a good prosy? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I got a Carlton tank buster. All the way from France. He looks handsome, doesn't he? Dear Dolly, greetings from the land of frogs and garlic, though I haven't seen neither of them. Just mud and more mud. You can read it later. Let's, um, let's do something fun, Les. Let's go to the pictures. The only thing I feel like doing is kicking the shit out of Long Harry's fat head. We really said we weren't to go to Fitzroy anymore? And I will turn the favour. I'll slit his throat if he comes down here. You know what I reckon? If you went and saw Harry, bought him a beer, everything would sort out. Let's just nip it in the bud before someone really gets hurt. Before someone gets hurt? Well... <laughs> He almost split me skull, doll. You brought that on yourself? Brought it on myself! Laying people off against each other? Double-crossing, triple-crossing? You're always trying to prove that you're smarter than everybody else, and I don't know why. What's it all for? I'll tell you what it's fucking for. Where did this come from? Hey? Hey? Hey, this shit? <laughs> huh? My mental schemes, Mithy, you don't have to spread your legs day and night so no piss on me parade when you're happy enough to take the spoils. All I'm saying is that someone has got to pull their head in. A few days ago, there was none of this silly my territory, your territory. We was all just mates. Mates? Well, mates don't go kicking you in the head, don't, don't stab you in the back, hey? Fuck you if that's your idea of being mate. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Les, where are you going? Fuck you. Hey, you're a bloody waste of time. You don't do anything around here. Loves me, loves me not. Can town ladies sing this song? Do da, do da. Can town race track? So don't, so don't piss on me parade when you're happy enough to take the spoils.
You know what I reckon? When my head if you went and saw Harry, bought him a beer, everything would sort out. It would. Let's just nip this in the bud before someone really gets hurt. between you and Liz didn't go according to plan. <laughs> and, and look, 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 the way I think of it is that nobody's lost an eye and you've given out payback to her. Would payback him and Henry Stokes and well, the, there's no more need for any of this bad blood. This is between us. Dolly. Come and have a drink with me. Be destroyed the horse. What horse? The horse that kicked you. Oh, no, not yet. Well, it should, Les. Animal that's gone rogue. Can't be safe to have round the stables. Better be safe and sorry, I say. Well, who'd have thought a bookie's car could be such a dangerous job? Top up? Mm. Let me read your leaves first. Ma, oh, come on. Hurry. Now, now, Leslie, you know I got the gift from your gran. Well, you see the same thing for me every time, a wedding bells and confetti. Now, I just read what the leaves say. A lady. <laughs> Bowl me over with a feather. <laughs> oh, she's a special one, all right. She's kind, considerate. Yeah, she's got her head screwed on, all right. Plenty of common sense. She's brave, too. And loyal. She'll stand by you in a hurricane. Oh, and see this little piece here? Means she's got a heart made for loving. Perfect girl. Oh, she is. The leaves never lie. Oh, well, won't it be wonderful when you finally meet her?
Doll? Doll. Now, I'm really sorry about what I said before, eh? I was a real prick. Now, I know that. For me? Oh, Liz, you shouldn't have. Get out, mate. Huh? Huh? <laughs> How are you? Yeah, what happened to you? Oh, it doesn't matter. How is, how is the Harbour City? Oh, shit, oh. It's too bloody hot. I know. And you do all right with the Kilpatrick's bits and bobs? Oh, you bet I did. Man. Got over 400 pounds in me, kid. 400? Mate. What is Dole? She asleep, is she? No, she's not it. Oh, I'll let me help you. Yeah. Oi, Taylor! to rule them all. Next Sunday, Australia's first criminal superstar is just getting started. And then we'll take over this town. New Underbelly Squizzy. Next Sunday.